The engine currently under development by Toyota is, intriguingly, a water-powered marvel, a groundbreaking technology that mirrors their FCEVs like the Toyota Mirai and hydrogen-powered internal combustion engines, notably the recent development of the 1.6 hydrogen three-cylinder. Reflecting on history, water engines have perpetually enticed the automotive industry, holding the promise of substantial advantages over traditional engines and EVs. Countless endeavors have aimed to render water-powered engines practical for everyday use, yet until now, such pursuits have faced consistent setbacks. However, Toyota stands on the brink of revolutionizing this domain with their latest venture into water-based engine technology. Unlike its predecessors, often crafted in humble sheds with limited financial backing, Toyota's initiative benefits from substantial funding, enabling comprehensive testing of the engine across diverse conditions. How exactly does this water engine operate? Functionally akin to the HHO generator, the engine shares striking similarities with the hydrogen combustion engine found in the Toyota Yaris GRH2. Yet, it diverges by eschewing pre-processed hydrogen, opting instead to initiate a chemical reaction within the engine that dissects hydrogen from oxygen through electrolysis. Within the tank housing the water, electrodes emitting high voltages trigger the separation of H2O molecules, effectively isolating hydrogen and oxygen components. Since the hydrogen itself is contained within the water when it's stored in the tank, there's no reason for heavily armored and extremely heavy tanks, which is the case with FCEVs and hydrogen combustion engines, since hydrogen alone is extremely hard to contain. The process of powering the vehicle is where the similarities between hydrogen combustion engines and water engines start, as after it gets separated from oxygen, hydrogen is then sent to the engine where it combusts, similarly to compressed natural gas. And the overall way the engine itself functions is similar to CNG-powered ones. The fuel injectors need to be adapted for compressed gas, and the cylinder heads, pistons, and valves need to be armored, as hydrogen itself is highly combustible, making its detonation quite needy, which is why it needs stronger components. What are the long-term benefits to the environment? Well, first of all, it's almost completely zero emissions compared to regular internal combustion engines, similar to EVs while also being far more convenient than EVs. Actually, scrap that. It's more convenient than any other engine type out there. As long as you have access to diluted water, you'll be able to refuel it, and it'll also cost you next to nothing. Reduced oil extraction would indeed be a hallmark if water engines dominate, with fossil fuels likely confined to heavy machinery and large power units. Moreover, the need for extracting rare metals, a highly pollutant process plaguing the car industry, would diminish significantly. Current practices directly contaminate water sources and soil around mines, rendering these areas uninhabitable. Comparing water engines to hydrogen combustion engines and FCEVs marketed as zero emissions reveals a distinct advantage. Storing water demands minimal effort, while storing pure hydrogen requires meticulous conditions and exorbitant costs. Moreover, hydrogen, as a gas, poses containment challenges prone to leakage even with minor irregularities, necessitating armored tanks, constant surveillance, and meticulous upkeep. In contrast, water-powered vehicle fuel tanks could theoretically be any basic plastic container. Also, acquiring hydrogen in its sole form is also an expensive process, and it, combined with the numerous problems that surround the storage of the gas itself, is the reason why hydrogen hasn't yet caught on, and probably never will. Producing and storing hydrogen costs a lot of money, which in turn raises the price of the gas itself for the consumer, making us question why would you even buy hydrogen cars if they both are more expensive to buy and run compared to EVs and fossil-fueled vehicles? So, despite their eco-friendly nature and apparent simplicity in theory, the critical question remains. Are water engines truly practical for daily use? Absolutely. Contrary to misconceptions, they're far from feeble. A water-powered engine matches the performance of most gasoline engines and, theoretically, holds the potential to surpass regular internal combustion engines by generating up to three times more energy in megajoules than gasoline engines. Moreover, they stand out in terms of safety. Unlike other engine types reliant on highly combustible fuels constantly stored within the vehicle, water-powered engines eliminate worries about sudden fires or catastrophic explosions. Their manufacturing is surprisingly straightforward slightly more complex than typical gasoline engines, yet far simpler and more cost-effective to produce than both EVs and FCEVs. 
This inherent simplicity makes them an ideal solution for countries lacking development and oil resources. An exemplary case is that of Iranian scientist Aladin Kasemi, who ingeniously converted his Peugeot 405 to run on water, achieving a remarkable feat in technological innovation. Considering this feat from a modest setting, envision the potential of Toyota with adequate funding. Beyond ease of production, water-powered engines shine in their economic efficiency. Kasemi's modified 405 achieved an astounding 30 to 40 miles per gallon of water, a feat unimaginable for the base petrol engine in the car. This exceptional efficiency makes water-powered engines an economical choice compared to both gas-powered vehicles and EVs. This means that we can hypothetically see water-powered engines that can do 80-plus miles to the gallon without being completely gutless, which makes the car cost of running such cars even lower than what we initially believed it to be. With no mainstream models of this engine type and no active pursuit by other car manufacturers, the question lingers. Are water engines the future of vehicles? The prospect seems promising, but it's far from straightforward. There's a slew of challenges they've grappled with. Logistical hurdles take center stage. Despite minimal infrastructure adjustments required, the engine's experimental nature poses a problem. Most so-called functional prototypes have been unreliable, offering mediocre daily usability. Moreover, the division of water into hydrogen and oxygen raises safety concerns. Hydrogen containment is notoriously difficult. A tiny leak in the system could prove highly perilous. Even if Toyota crafts a reliable water-powered vehicle, resistance looms large. Lithium mining companies, battery producers, and notably oil corporations could quash such innovation. Water as a fuel threatens to replace fossil fuels in daily life diminishing the demand for rare elements like cobalt and lithium, shaking the foundations of immensely profitable companies like Rio Tinto. They'll pull every string to hinder further engine development. Need proof? Rumors swirl about such suppression happening 25 years ago with the first functional water-powered car. Inventor Stanley Allen Meyer faced constant threats, likely from oil representatives fearing the engine's popularity. He rebuffed offers to scrap his work despite danger. His sudden demise amid a dinner meeting with Belgian businessmen, allegedly poisoned, remains disputed, a mysterious end to a groundbreaking pursuit. As only a few days after his unfortunate passing, his car along with the plans on how to make the engine have been stolen from his garage, never to be seen again. So, as much as we'd love to see Toyota actually going through with this engine, we're not sure that that's going to happen anytime soon, if ever. And even if they were actually working on the engine, they are most likely doing so in absolute secrecy, which is why there are still no official confirmations on the project itself. Thanks for watching everyone. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button below and subscribe. See you in the next video.